It is Monday, September 5th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Monday puzzle today, so it shouldn't be too difficult or too time-consuming, and that's good because I am under a bit of time pressure, and as is often the case following those big Sunday grids, I have quite a few uh, corrections and clarifications from uh, viewers in the comments about yesterday's puzzle, so we'll uh, have to make sure there's time for that as well. And this um, highly corrected and informed edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Trash Snack, Bradley Pirtle, and, as always, the inestimable hood monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shulmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel and making it a sustainable part of my daily work. I do very much appreciate that. So thank you to everybody who has done so. And if you'd like to become a benefactor like those five and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at daily so sorry, patreon.com slash daily solve uh, and in a link in the description field underneath the video. And I saw actually just yesterday or the day before, um, I think two or three more mugs have been shipped out to benefactors of the Patreon campaign. So I hope those of you who are receiving mugs enjoy them. And if you'd like to um, become a patron at any tier, you can get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And you can find that as well at patreon.com slash daily solve. And thank you to all of you as well who have backed the campaign at any level. I do very much appreciate it. It's how this is a sustainable activity for me every single day. And it means a lot. So thank you. And finally, you can subscribe to the channel. Of course, please do. We're getting close to that 10,000 number. And you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server and a link in the description field underneath the video to join uh, the rest of that community. So all of that said, let's get on to the crossword itself. This is a Monday puzzle constructed by Adam Simpson, who is a, um, a new constructor and... Uh, this is his debut puzzle. Well, I don't know that he's a new constructor. I'm sure he's an experienced crossword constructor in general, but this is his New York Times crossword debut. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It's a Monday puzzle, so there is a theme, and we'll have to find out what that is. Let's play. All right, we've got two crosses in the grid. Let's see if that is relevant to the theme, or it may not be. Blank day, early September observance. In the U.S., this is Labor Day. Uh, often often around the time when children go back to school. Sound of a big kiss. A smack, maybe? I'm not sure about that. Let's check the crosses. Organization with a shelter support fund. The SPCA, maybe? The Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals? It's a bit of a guess. LeBlanc of Friends. Matt LeBlanc, an actor from Friends. There we go. That's blank. Not true. That's a lie, you might say. Company head for short, a CEO, presumably. And a camera brand that merged with Minolta in 2003 is, what is this? Um, I'll recognize it as soon as I see it. Caveman diet, familiarly. The paleo diet. It's all, what is it? It all meats and vegetables, no grains, I think, maybe. Something like that. Uh, where flutes are played in an orchestra, the wind section, maybe? And what about these downs? Apt rhyme for rude and crude. <laughs> rude, crude, and lewd. I think that's been used various for various purposes. Et blank and others in Latin. Et, et alia. Others, other, other people being listed. Hot dog holders are hot dog buns. Uh, there's a funny thing I saw... So a few weeks ago, it was on Twitter, and it was people posting images of their children who instinctively ate hot dogs, not from end to end, but rather sort of in the middle of it as though they were sort of biting into a more traditional sandwich. And I guess it makes sense that if you are encountering this thing and you don't have any social expectations about how it would be eaten because you're you know, tiny child, uh, why wouldn't you be just as likely to start from that <laughs> that part as anywhere else? And apparently it's a fairly common thing. Anyway, it, it, I thought it was extremely amusing. Anyway, I'd wager that odds are 
dwell, if you dwell somewhere, you reside there. And to escape capture by somebody, you elude them. Blank today, USA Today, maybe. The newspaper, that's my guess, because today is capitalized, so it'll be a brand name of some kind, I would think. Not sanitary could be unsterilized or unhealthy. Um, not sure. AMC's Better Call Saul, the spinoff show of Breaking Bad. Uh, brother of Cain and Seth, Abel. Cain's um, brother, Abel, and Seth's as well. Color variant is a hue, a hue of a particular color. And, oh, oh, whoops, sorry, at Ollie with Ali Ali with two eyes. And then vanish into thin air is dissipate. Um, adhesive resin is epoxy, a very, very strong adhesive substance, epoxy. Peaceful pastoral scene. Idyll. It, idyllic, same, same root. Oh, is it Konica? Is that the is that the camera? This is sort of scratching an itch of familiarity, but I can't, um, not 100% certain, but I think Konica, that looks right to me. Ho hopefully it is. Let's check the cross. Vaping apparatus informally could be an e-cig, an e-cigarette. Oh, not sanitary, it's unhygienic. I don't know why that, I don't know why that took me a moment to get, but there we go. Unhygienic. Scatterbrained sort could be a ditz, maybe. That person is ditzy. And a goose egg often used to indicate a score or a total of zero. Triangular traffic sign. Um, the yield indicator in the United States is triangular in shape. So there we go. To finish is to end. And to wash oneself is to clean or bathe, maybe. Maybe wash oneself. Bathe is maybe a little more specific and accurate. Here we go. Qualifying hurdle for practicing law bar examination. So what's going on here? We have T-I-O-N at the end of each of these. Um, I don't see what... I'm assuming... Yeah, these, these are certainly both... Each of these is a, the, is a theme answer. We can tell because it's highlighting the answer that must be the revealer down there. But I don't see what they have in common exactly, except for that just the little ending. Could be an, could be ion, ions. Oh, ions are positively charged, and we have two crosses in the grid. Maybe that's what it is. Two plus, you know, plus signs. In other words, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Let's keep looking. Doily fabric lace. You could have a, a lace doily. Okay, enjoyed a, a smorgasbord, say. You ate from the grand spread of food. Certain card that can be either high or low in a deck. Ace, or oh, the ace, right? Is it the ace of something? Ace of clubs? I'm just saying clubs because it fits in the allocated cells there. I don't know if that's what it wants, but let's try it out and check some crosses. Breakfast restaurant chain could be IHOP, the International House of Pancakes. And home for a wild animal. Wild animal could have a lair. Betray. Oh, here we go. Betray or a hint to what can precede each half of 17, 25, and 43 across. Oh, sorry. I was doing the, the thing I did yesterday again. I was reading the wrong one. I was reading this, which is the sort of reference, this sort of linked clue here. What I should be reading is up here. Pre-hiring formality. Often, oh, this does this isn't going to end with ION, so maybe my ION inference was wrong. Pre hiring formality, a reference check, okay. And, and anyway, I, I read the revealer, so I may as well look at it. Betray or a hint to what can precede each half of 1725. Well, betray, I want that to be double cross because of these two crosses in the grid. But what does that mean? A hint to what can, pre a hint to what can precede each half of seven. So it's not saying double cross would precede it. I think that's probably the answer here, but oops, don't want to cross. 
Ähm sorry, I'm sorry if this is jumping out at you. I'm just not seeing it for some reason. Let's just keep solving for now. Father, uh, French would be pair. Dinosaur and Toy Story. I think the dinosaur and Toy Story was named Rex. It was a T-Rex little doll, little T-Rex figurine. Pours down is it's rains, it's pouring, it's raining. And Gallagher of the Umbrella Academy. I think this is a Netflix show, maybe? I'm not sure. But it looks like Aiden. I mean, surely that's the name. First responder on a battlefield could be a medic. And 1950s presidential initials, Dwight, uh, initials Dwight D. Eisenhower with an E. And then Eileen Chaikin, co-creator of The L Word. I've heard the name Eileen Chaikin, so that must be it. Hoover competitor is Orec, a uh, manufacturer of vacuum cleaners. And to jot down is to note something. Bit of equipment in tennis and basketball, each of those sports uses a net. And basmati, e.g. basmati rice, is a variety of rice, so there we go. Aching scent of guilt is regret or... No. Trio with a hip-hop cover of Aerosmith's Walk This Way. Looks like Run DMC to me, the classic hip-hop group. And a wheel cover that may be chrome-plated, a hubcap, where you are on a mall directory. You are here, I suppose, on many sorts of area maps or helpful maps. Blank Keller, first deaf-blind person to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree. The famous Helen Keller, what an impressive person. And Outback Bird that can go two months without food would be the uh, emu. And to give off an aura, for instance, to emit it. Here we have one of 24 in the human skeleton, 24 ribs. So one of them is a rib. And UFO pilots, some believe, are ETs, extraterrestrials. Okay, what do we have up here? Liquor in a Mai Tai would be, of course, rum. It's basically a tiki drink. And aching sense of guilt. Oh, remorse, of course. There we go, sorry. Remorse is a cousin of regret, certainly. Patch of loose rock that aptly rhymes with debris. That would be scree. It's just a term for a patch of loose rock. And then on, a, on the Monday puzzle, we get this helpful little rhyme, I suppose, to nudge us along. Okay. Hawaiian raw fish dishes. Hmm. Oh, poke bowls. Right. Okay. I was seeing that be there and thinking, what on earth is that? What is this phrase? It's, it's just poke, but in this case, poke bowls. Okay, which is indeed a raw fish dish. So unadulterated is pure. And a death notice in brief is an obit, an obituary. Abstract artist Paul, Paul Clay, famous abstract artist, uh, whose name is pronounced not quite as it would look in intuitive English, really impresses, wows, it really impresses her, wows her. Hurdle for aspiring attorneys for short. The LSAT, the uh, legal standardized achievement test or whatever it is. I don't need to, I don't need to know. Uh, or law, maybe it's law school admissions test. That's fine. I'm not going to read a correction of that tomorrow if that's wrong, <laughs> because it's not important. We know what it actually is in concept. Tax IDs are SSNs, social security numbers, and uh, Egyptian dam, the Aswan dam. And then nuisances are pests. Largest Greek island, it must be Crete. I don't, I don't know that I would have known that off the top of my head, but it sounds extremely plausible. So, Nobel winning chemist Curie, Marie, famous Marie Curie, so lots of famous names in today's puzzle. And skull propeller would be an oar, so a skull is a, is a, a certain, um, you know, fast rowing boat. There we go. That's the Monday puzzle. There we go. So what is going on? Sorry, a hint to what double cross, a con. What is going on? Double cross. So wind, what could be in front of wind? Oh, maybe it's each of these because double, double wind is a kind of instrument and then cross section. That's what it is. Sorry. Okay. This said, when this said a hint to what can proceed, I was taking that to mean we would need to find 
a synonym for double cross, and then that's what would precede them. But no, it, the, each of the, each component of double cross, double and cross, respectively, precedes each half of the theme answer. So we have double bar. Is that something? And then cross examination, double bar. No. Oh no, no. Is it crossbar and cross examination? Oh right, it's not double. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry. <laughs> Once again, as with yesterday, I'm making a complete hash of this. So we have crosswind and cross section. It's not that each of these respectively precedes the words. It's that we have double cross. We have two crosses. So crosswind, cross section, crossbar, cross examination, cross reference, and cross check. And then here are our double crosses illustrated in the grid. There we go. That's the full theme. That's the full theme explained. I finally understand it. I'm sorry for my uh, tardiness in, in coming to that realization. So there we go. Okay. Nice. Good. <laughs> A fun debut puzzle. Good. Um, uh, good work finding six words that that neatly pair up into three compound uh, nouns to allow for the double cross. It's one of those very simple themes that's almost surprising. It hasn't been done before, but I presume it hasn't because I think they do check for that. They do uh, a reference check, maybe. And there we go. Uh, the Monday puzzle, maybe just a tad, perhaps more more challenging than a typical Monday puzzle, but still, obviously, it being a Monday, pretty approachable. So there we go. Let me know how you fared. And if you let me know about your, your journey to realizing the full scope of the theme. I wonder if it was more direct than my windy, wendy route. So now let's get on to those corrections from yesterday's puzzle, which, as I indicated, are myriad. Any prophet explains maltose is the sugar extracted from grain during the malting phase of brew beer brewing. It's what yeast consumes and converts into alcohol. So there we go. That makes sense. I... I had assumed most of that, except I was wondering maybe it's a waste, it's a byproduct, um, like um, um, molasses, for instance. I was thinking maybe it was that sort of thing, but no, it's what the yeast consumes and, con and converts into alcohol. So thank you, any profit. Uh, Stephen Giblin explained some context for one of the clues, stupid human tricks, um, which was part of the clue that resolved to dare, was a recurring part of the David Letterman show. I originally filled in Dave, but changed to Dare when Dave proved not to fit. So there we go. I didn't recognize that. I mean, I've seen bits of David Letterman's show, but I was never a big late night TV watcher. Okay, Alan uh, Eton explains the Baltimore, the Lord Baltimore in 91 Across, is the second Baron Baltimore Cecil Calvert, the founder of the province of Maryland and the namesake of Baltimore, Maryland. In addition to being a Baron, he was also a Lord. So thank you for that. I did, I did read up about the Barons Baltimore, who continued until sometime in the 18th century, I think, and then the the line died out when there was there was no uh, there was no heir to the to the baronage. Um, this is an incredibly this is an incredibly pedantic point, but um, he wasn't really a baron in addition to being a lord. He's lord by virtue of being a baron. So bar a, a baronage is a is a title in the peerage. He was actually strangely a even though he was English, he was um, raised to the peerage of Ireland, actually, specifically. Um, but anyway, he was a lord because he was a baron. So he was, you know, L Lord Baltimore, I guess, um, uh, or Baron Baltimore. Okay. Old Footer uh, says, I've just been reading about Alastair Sim's rather varied life. Alastair Sims, Sim, the actor referenced in yesterday's puzzle. He was born in Edinburgh, and I fear, feel sure I saw him when I was a child as a pantomime dame in Edinburgh one Christmas. That is absolutely amazing. What a what a good, I don't know, just sort of story to have had. Um, also, lugs have a different, rather different meaning in Scotland, where we have a saying such as, he's at the lug of the law, meaning he has powerful connections. Lug equals ear. Big armchairs have lugs too. So there we go. Thanks for that. Uh, well, those two uh, bits of interest. Uh, ben Ward, oh no, Ben Ward says, I only heard the phone interference once, which reminds me I forgot to airplane my phone. Sorry, sorry. Ben Ward says, I don't think you went back to 78 across. Potala Palace City, no, I completely forgot to go back to that clue, which was Lhasa. 
So there we go. Apparently, the Patala Palace is a Tibetan uh, Dzong fortress and was the winter palace of the Dalai Lamas from 1649 to 1959, a museum since then and a World Heritage Site since 1984. So thank you for that. That was that was new knowledge for me, so I appreciate it. Nicole Hicks corrects my uh, pronunciation. Thank you for that. B-A-T-I-K um, is pronounced batik. I think I said batik or something like that. I was uh, completely wrong. Anyway, it uses wax as a resist and originated in Java, Indonesia, explains Nicole Hicks. So that's batik. Thank you. And finally, Thor Christensen explains... In baseball, a backdoor pitch is a pitch that just catches the strike zone on the outside, the side that the batter isn't on. A backdoor slider, which was what was referenced in the clue yesterday, was would be a pitch that looks like it's going to be on the outside of the zone away from the batter until it slides just far enough inside to catch a piece on the zone, a piece, piece of the, the zone, the strike zone. Technically, all sliders are lateral breaking. Oh, right, that was part of the clue, lateral breaking. But incorporating backdoor in there makes for a nice long clue. Uh, thank you for that, Thor Christensen. I will probably remember bits of that, but not the full uh, the full explanation. But I appreciate it, of course, nonetheless. So thank you to everybody who uh, has informed me today. I appreciate that, as always. And I'll be back tomorrow with the Tuesday puzzle. Should be another relatively approachable themed crossword. So join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care.